Well, good day, tubes. How's she hanging? Pretty good here. We're just uh, in a little mini garage right now. Uh, I just wanted to have a little look at this go kart thing here. Uh, Junior couldn't wait for me to do a video for you guys showing how we got it going again. So we did get it going. It does run. Uh, he's been driving it around a little bit and stuff, and uh, we fixed the throttle cable. Um, I actually fixed it. I got a I got a new little piece and joined it. Now this is it's a little bit confusing, but uh, so it was broken like here. All right, right where it connects onto there. Um, so what I did, uh, I got a little piece and uh, joined it. I, so I raised it raised them together with my torch and stuff, raised it together, and uh, just had enough I could run through and then it was working good. Well, grimy old dad gets on it and tries it and stomps on it and rips it off the other end. <laughs> so I just uh, I said to Dale, okay, let's just go get some new cable and we'll just do a whole new cable. So we ran a whole new cable through. And uh, I don't know how it was on originally, but I just kind of put it right through a... Uh, I bolt through the hole there and just kind of wound it around and tightened her down and it seemed to work okay. So yeah. Um, and then back here, uh, you know, it comes down the frame rail and then does almost a 90 and then into the back here, if you remember looking down in here on this, uh, it's pretty dark, but... Uh, so it comes into this little nut thing here. Uh, is that right? Yeah, this little nut thing right there. So that's what holds it. And it actually ripped out of there. So we just run a whole new cable in and uh, drove on. So uh, changed the oil in it. I don't think it had ever been changed since I was Dylan's age. And uh, the Lions Club, of course, ran it a f quite a few times in the parade and then shut her off, put her away again. Uh, so we did change the oil. It has skipped off the chain a few times on him as he was driving around. And I thought that was interesting. Now, for, I think, I don't know what happened. I don't remember when we had it before that we gave it to the Lions Club. What had gone on um, with the, the, the tension on the chain, but it is really tight. And I kind of think that it's been so tight that it's pulled on the, on the bearing too tight in here on the, on this, uh, uh, which me freaking call it in there. See how that spins? Let's zoom you in here a bit. We'll get you a little better view. See how it spins freely of the shaft. Now there's a bearing in there, and I do believe that because they've had like this is really, really, really tight. Like there is no slack at all in that thing. I think what it's done is wrecked the bearing in there. Now it's not really tracking straight. So uh, it probably needs to be all redone, but that's a really small chain. It surprised me. It, uh, it's not a 40 or 41 chain. I think it's more like a 30 in the 30 series or something. It's really small, but really, really friggin' tight. Like there should be a little more slack to it than that, you know? So I think that's what's happened. It's kind of pulled and it's not tracking straight now. And it's, it's even so tight, it's hard to show you, but maybe if we get a shot like this, See that how the chain at the end here is like even coming off the side like it's it'll wear the sprocket out real fast it looks to me like it's it's not bad then it hits the sprocket and then it kind of does a down the side kind of thing so it uh, probably needs to be all replaced I know the uh, couple of the bearings are getting kind of sloppy in the wheels too and they're just those uh, those type of bearings that you just kind of pop out, snap a new one in, off you go again, right? And they're usually sloppy from start, but uh, yeah, so um, it runs pretty good, but it's running like it needs to have some work done on the carburation issues. Like inside here, there's some, uh, I believe it's a diaphragm and some things under here, and then there's one that'll mount right on the tank. Uh, it needs a bit of work, so that might be a winter, winter project. Uh, where we're gonna do that, I don't know because I, of course I you know I don't have heat in here, right? So, but let's do a little grimy cold start on it and see uh, she'll fire up. 
Um, it's idling a little high. I wonder if the Lions Club guys, whoever was running it, cranked the idle up a bit because it wouldn't keep running or something. I don't know, but it kind of wants to start taking off on its own. And uh, I don't know exactly what RPM clutch is on this, but I think most of them are in around the 2000 RPM. They start engaging. So it's, I don't think it's running that fast, but I think the clutch is half wore out too. So if it's not lined up perfectly, it's gonna not work right. So, but let's uh, fire it up here. Um, this has, now, before we go onto the tripod here, it has a little switch here. I guess in an emergency, you could brrr, kill the engine. The throttle stuck on or whatever. Uh, down in here, we got a choke. And we got to turn it on there, too. I'm pretty sure there was still some gas in it. Can't really tell without looking, I guess. Got a match? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a little bit in there. We uh, drained all that out too and uh, put some fresher in. That's always a nightmare, I remember, with this thing trying to get the bloody friggin' <laughs> fill it up, especially if the body's on, because you got like a little, uh, let me think now, there's a little cutout for the engine, and then the little cutout for the guy, and it's pretty pretty tough getting that down there. You almost need to use a funnel. But Anyways, let's uh, see if she'll at least fire up, and then uh, after we do that, we'll. Uh, We'll, uh, we've got a Princess Auto Flyer come today I want to look at too, so um, fire it up here and see what happens. All right, uh, first thing you want to do when you fire anything up on the pull cord is look behind you where your, your elbow is going to go and you don't want to smash it into a wall or something. It's the first thing I always do. I'm like, yeah, 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 we're good here. Okay. <laughs> okay, so shouldn't have to give it any throttle. It's definitely not a Honda. It's not going to start on the second pole, but uh, probably three poles maybe, although it is cold out. Too bad, eh, for a Briggs. Jeez. Jeez, that's almost Honda quality. <laughs> Started up on the uh, second pole. Holy freaking crap. That's pretty good. So a little bit of a burnout for there too, no smoke or nothing, but uh, she might have she might have made a bit of a patch on the ground. Oh, it's warm. The tire's a bit warm. So yeah, but you know uh, he's been out a little bit on it, and uh, he should have seen the face. So man, when he first went on it, holy cow, the smile! <laughs> holy jeez, it was like ear to ear, literally ear to ear. So. But uh, yeah, so I don't know, maybe just leave that engine on there. It seems to be pretty good. I wouldn't mind taking it off, getting it cleaned up. You know, take off uh, the engine right off it and then get it cleaned up. And cause it's got a lot of schmang and stuff on it. It's all kind of grimy, greasy. Or maybe just put the Honda to her. At least the Honda that's got the freaking tank on the very top, it'd be a heck of a lot easier to uh, fill. But uh, that might also hamper where the body is going to sit. If we put the body on, which I kind of really don't think I'm going to put the body back onto it, because it is a freaking nightmare to get out of it. I remember that as a kid driving this thing. And, you know, I always liked Dylan's size. And uh, it was a nightmare then to get out, so I couldn't imagine a full adult like my size now trying to get out of this stupid thing would suck. So, yeah, but, geez, that actually started up good. I'm pretty happy with that. But, uh... Definitely needs some, some clutch work. Now, if you change the sprocket, I haven't added a part yet, of course, and I don't exactly know, but it's hard to 
kind of see, but the brake's all, all associated with that too. It's a band brake, right? And even it's kind of uh, it's a little cockeyed. That needs to be tightened up maybe. Tighten that up a bit and then that would, uh, yeah, that would be better. It's even, looks like it's gotten bent or something or whatever. I mean, it works, but it's definitely not lined up right. It's probably needing, well, maybe it's not needing a new band. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty basic, though. You know, you push your foot on it, and it just kind of tightens that up, and, you know, it works. It works really good, but to me, it looks like that needs to get a tighten, and that would straighten her up a bit. But, um, see, that's uh, it's all part... Oh, wow, look at the angle of this here. Probably that chain is like half ass wore out too, you know. Seems to be lots of play here and stuff. Well, actually, it doesn't seem bad now, but it seems to change tension, so something's weird on it somewhere. It's where the clutch is sitting, maybe, right now or something. I don't know, it seems fine there now. That's weird, eh? Or maybe this is at a round and it's all screwy now. It probably needs to be all redone, but you would need to find. And thank you for that, uh, whoever it was that sent that link to that uh, uh, website for the go-kart stuff. Man, that's a good site. Probably get some parts off of that, but i uh, have to change all this, I think, to the 41 or something pitch. But uh, it would have to be the same whole dimensions as, you know, this brake setup and stuff here. So it would all kind of unbolt. I presume there's, yeah, there's bolts. It looks like another little nut there for a spacer and then the bolt going through the other side. So a little bit of work, you know, but uh, it's definitely out of alignment now. So it's had a lot of miles, I guess, put on it, you know, like we drove the heck out of it when we had it. And then we donated it to the Lions Club, probably because my mom's like, oh, you got to get that thing away from him. It's going to kill him, which, you know, it might have, but hard to say. Lots of fun. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so that's about it for go-kart right now. We're uh, needing to do, like I say, bearings and stuff. And, you know, this is... Steering's a little... A little floppy here and there, but it's not bad. It's not, you know, horrendously bad yet. Uh, tires. Of course, there's no tread, so I guess they're still good. Pop some new bearings in. Hopefully the uh, shafts are okay, that they're not wore out too, because it'll be just as sloppy as it, you know, it is now, so... But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Anyways, we got a Princess Auto Flyer on the counter here to look at, so let's flop her open and see what we got today, this week anyways. Alright, so this starts on Tuesday, November 14th, coming up. What do we got here? Nice winch, 6,000 pound winch. Ooh, I don't think I need that though. 10 tray dehydrator. Wow, that's kind of cool, that's expensive though. Floor jack, no, good for that. Use my floor jack for quite a while, actually. Um, I actually had to use it on uh, my leaf trailer, the big back door there. I wasn't paying attention, and I was backing up, backing up, backing up, and uh, it was dumping as I was backing up, and I didn't realize that it had got pinched on a branch or something off a tree, and it pushed the door too much this way, and it like spread the hinges open, and then it wouldn't shut right again. So you guys missed a video where I had to cut all the hinges off of there and weld on new ones and realign it weld on new ones and sorry you missed a video on that but I had to do that at the garage right it's where all my tools are so but uh, anyways that's what we had to do so okay what do we got on this page quick release auto adjusting pipe wrench I wonder if they're any good I don't know 25 bucks still though see the the pex uh, pex thingies have come down quite a bit. Man, they were like 150 bucks when they first came out with that. Fish tape. Ooh, look at the little ladders. That's kind of cool. Some storage thingies. Cabinet key thingies. Oh, this page sucks. Ah, vacuum. Sucks. Um, compressors. We might need a little compressor for out here, maybe in the corner. Just a little guy. If we're going to work out here. I don't know. I was thinking of insulating here. Put insulation in. Either spray foam, maybe I'll get my buddy Murray to spray foam it for me, or or uh, rock saw batten insulation, or I don't know. See, I'm not 100% sure what 
the width is here it looks kind of too narrow so it might be better to spray foam it and then you don't have to worry about cutting stuff right this one here looks wider than me i don't know i have to put a tape on it and see it's supposed to be 16 on center but i don't know if they are or not anyways back to this sorry i got off topic here some uh, pretty sweet wood splitters look at this now they're up to 25 ton and that one looks like it flips like this way too so you can just push a log onto it and you don't have to lift it up onto the, the rack there's a nice electric one. Look at the price of the electric one even. It's only 9 ton. Holy. There you go. We could put some big greasy tires like that on this thing. Maybe that'd get her up off the ground a bit. That'd be pretty sweet. You might have to change your gearing a little bit though so you could push those big tires because you put uh, too small of a gear on it which would make it go faster. It would take a lot longer to get going. It'd probably burn out your clutch. So, Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, what is that? $150 for a CO2 Colt Pace Peacemaker BB pistol. Velocity 410 foot a second. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's kind of neat. You just need to have it as, you know, a replica of one or something. Bunch of snow stuff. For frig sakes, I don't want to be looking at that. <laughs> Wild Pack 8 piece game processing set. Well, I don't think I need that either. Pretty sweet little lights here, though. Sweet. But I'm good for light suit. Now we're into more trailer stuff. Some tires. Man, it's getting cold out here. It's supposed to be really crappy here tomorrow. So I actually have some black paint. I want to, I've got my leaf trailer in the garage there now, warming it up, keeping it warm so I can paint it again. Remember we painted that thing when we built that? Needs another paint job so it sits outside all winter, right? So booster cables. That's actually kind of cool. Low profile, 64 liter, low profile oil drainer. It looks like it's got like a little pump maybe to pop it into a jug after or something. That'd be kind of sweet. Yeah, because how would you... 64 liters, that'd be pretty bloody heavy to lift that and try to dump it into something. Bunch of pullers. Bunch more pullers. There's a tube bender. Some uh, four-piece locking wheel nut remover set. Hmm. Axle nut set cable hoists there you go that's what we need we could put that right in here maybe no room for anything else but hey that's right dangerous most dangerous most dangerous most dangerous jack in the world right there if you ever ever have an opportunity to use one of those walk away <laughs> they're so freaking dangerous see what happens is um they don't put a very big base on the bottom so you start jacking something up and then it falls off and you get crushed by it. Never get under a car that's just been held up by that. Put some of those under it. <laughs> it's just a little safety thing for you. Or get yourself a set of these too and just kind of drive it up. That's they really work good too. So look at that transmission jack. Transmission jack. Shh, jack. Sweet. What is that? Motorcycle dolly. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Sweet Hobart. Look at this, you can actually buy gas cylinders, 100% argon. So what happens when that's empty? So you pay $199 for the tank and for the gas in it, and then it, well actually $219 if you bought it not on sale. Uh, so what would happen then? You throw that tank out and get another one, or they can you refill that? It doesn't really tell you that, does it? Seems like it's just a one-time use thing, and then you just go buy another one for 100 and 219. It's not very much either, 20 cubic feet. That's a pretty small little guy. Wow. Ooh, another one. What is that one? 1911 spring-powered BB air pistol with 250 steel BBs. $30. Actually, $29.99. Oh, look at that. 120 mil metal ammo box and toolbox. Sweet. Like for rockets or something. I don't think I need that though. Oh, it's still about the fidget spinners, right? Holy. Man, that was quite a fad that run through. God, it was like the freaking plague for God's sakes. Anyways, look at this. Are you freaking kidding me? Read this one. I'll read it for you as well. $600, 24-inch cordless, battery-powered two-stage snowblower. Um, I guess it's a lithium-ion, 80-volt. 2500 watt brushless motor with a runtime of up to 40 minutes. Never gonna happen. You would never get, ever get 40 minutes out of that, guaranteed, unless it was just extraordinarily light stuff. As soon as you hit anything heavy with that, it would probably just 
and then pfft, dead battery. <laughs> oh, that has got to be the silliest thing I have ever seen. A cordless snowblower, 24 inch. That's like from here. So let's say 6, 12, 24. So roughly to about there. Snowblower. That would be so stupid. <laughs> but anyways, to each his own. Ooh, tubeless tire, turf tire, tubeless turf tire, motorcycle handbag, wheelbarrow, wood handles. Wow, you can actually buy new handles. That's crazy. Seven, eight, eight bucks. 150 for a whole new one. <laughs> um, dry rack, dry hockey bag. These are getting everything here. Punching bags, even. Laundry punching bag. What? Laundry? All right. Baseball bat assorted 15 inch XP LED baseball flashlights. Okay. <laughs> Why they got some weird stuff in this one? Coaxial cable, 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 TV, hooking up stuff. Two pack micro USB type C adapter. Okay. Pretty good flyer. Oh, cameras! Oh, decoys. Really? Can you guys sell real ones? <laughs> decoys. That's not going to help if someone's breaking your house. Man. Oh, well. LED lantern. That's pretty cool. And then we're going to see them showing up all around here, too. <laughs> Cemetery people love that kind of stuff. One gauge, 25 foot professional series booster cables. I think those are like the ones I've got. And they are pretty friggin' nice. I like them. You can't, you can't snap. You know, like hit these together here and they you actually have to open it up. So they're kind of protected, I guess, from the outside or whatever. A uh, little air tank, some little air manifolds. Nice compressor. We should put one of those in here. That would fit probably right up right in this area. <laughs> no, not happening. That would be a big compressor, and that is probably, I think that is the three phase too, and that's a big one. Look at the output though. 10 horsepower, 30, 33.6 CFM at 175 PSI. I think that's what that means there. Wow, so when it's full capacity, fully filled, it's pumping out it's still 36.6 CFM. That's pretty awesome. Let's see, what's this one? At 90 PSI, this one's putting out 18.1 CFM, so look at the difference, eh? Five horse, so you could run that on normal power. This one would need a three phase, I do believe. Where the one I've got in the garage, which is like that one, but a little bigger, is the one just below this one that you can still run on normal power uh, without the three phase. So, but uh, ooh, lots of air tools. I think I'm good for that. Yeah, good for that. Oh, sure, now, they probably had these for a while, but you know what, uh, that's what I got at the garage is one air hose reel, and the other one's uh, the uh, power cord. Now they do them all in one. That's still pretty bloody expensive, though, eh? Holy. Jeez, yeah, mine's more like this one kind of thing, and then you know, we got the power cord beside it. Jeez. But anyways, okay. Not much. Here looks like more air stuff. Some nice sockets. I think I'm good for sockets too right now. Oh, there you go. Those would fit in my little driver gun uh, gun thing. $2.99. Wow, that's pretty good. Metric 5 to 11 mil, 3 16ths to 7 16ths. Nut driver set. It's pretty darn cheap. Probably are cheap though. Ah, okay. What page are we on here? 25. We're just past the center here. This will go fast now because a lot of the stuff is, you know crappier stuff <laughs> so there's a colored color coded socket set so you know well that brown one's a half inch or you'd have to remember all that I guess too I'd forget probably but what is that two and a quarter inch diameter deflection gauge accurately measures small linear distances oh that's cool speaking of distances we had a survey guy in survey in the big back field there today for uh, laying out uh, road and stuff through it finally I've been here 14 years and that's been the talk the whole time I've been here. Oh, don't bury anybody in there until we put a road through. I'm like, okay. So maybe it's something going to happen. I don't know. Padded suspenders. Maybe I should get into some suspenders. No, I'm not. Uh, don't think so. 
I'm good. <laughs> I wear leather cow straps around my gut. Oh, look, page 29. Sorry. Okay, what do we got here? Beast guns. Good for that. Beast gun accessory kit. Oh, that actually might be handy. I've got a little story for you and something that we had to fix on the 110. All that you guys missed again, unfortunately. Um, the steering cylinder went bad on it. So for the power steering, there's a big cylinder underneath that's mounted solidly to the, to the axle on one side and then it goes to the cylinder and then it's got the rod that goes in and out to the uh, joint on the other side and there's a tie rod that goes from one side to the other and then it steers that way, right? The joint out by the wheel got all floppy and loose and stuff. There's no grease fitting on it, right? So you need something like this with like a needle to uh, jab into the thing and then pump, 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 pump some grease into it. That's the only way you're going to get grease into it. So I, uh, I've got it, it out and I've put the new one in. Works way better now. It's getting pretty sloppy and kind of you can see it like, you know, down the road, bang, 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 bang. The more it does that, the worse it gets, right? So that's 2,600 hours on that and uh... 12 years, 12 years old, I guess. So, you know, for never having grease, it's pretty good. So, yeah, but uh, got that cylinder. I want to tear it apart just to have a look inside and stuff. So, just for fun. Uh, ooh, look at that mini, mini metal lathe. That would fit pretty good in here somewhere, wouldn't it? But anyways, very, 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 very limited space now. So we have to be very, 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 very careful with what we do with what in here anyways. And it's very, 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 very cold in here because I got no frickin' insulation or heat, so. Wouldn't take much to heat it, though, if it was insulated, I don't think. It'd be pretty decent. Well, we're into some engines. What is that? Soldering iron stand. Oh, I don't need that. It's drill press, shock press, directional control, kickoff. That's ideal for log splitters, presses, compactors, hand-free cylinder retraction and kickoff. So it's like a log splitter back and forth. Pretty sweet. Nice engine. What is that? Power fist. Ooh, it's electric start. Hmm. Ooh, there's some power packs over here. Pretty sweet. All the hydraulic stuff. I don't really need any of that, so we'll just sit through that. Look at that poor dog. It looks like a fake dog, actually. <laughs> it might be real. I don't know. Some pumps. We're good for that. Shovels. Guess we're good for that. Oh, come on. One handed, eh? There we go. Heaters! There we go! Now we're talking! 5,000 watt construction heater. Wow, that would really just suck the juice back. Holy crap, I'd have to probably fire up my generator, run it off of that maybe. 220 off of that. I guess that would work, but um, I don't know. You'd have to have the generator outside, though. That's the only downfall. It's nice to run a cord in and just plug it in away you go, but. I mean, that's a possibility. We could uh, somehow rig a exhaust pipe outside, but I don't think having that inside running is a good idea. I wouldn't go with one of these either because that would definitely snuff you out. you got to have some kind of heat inside that's not, or, you know, these things, or those things. you got to have some kind of heat inside that's like a forced air, something that the, it gets vented outside. I don't really want to go electric, though. Holy crap, that would just... No. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, electrical stuff, cords and stuff, and casters. Ooh, whole pile of locks that you know are probably crappy locks. Page forty-one. I think we're getting down to the nitty gritty. I like these things, but you know if something went wrong with it, where the heck would you ever get parts? Because they'd be like, oh no, we don't carry parts for that. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't. So good idea not to buy those kind of things like that. Wheel chalk sets, some jacks. Well, pressure washers, I think they're good for that. Man, it's getting cold here. I didn't bring my coat. I thought it was going to be warmer out here, but it's not. <laughs> oh, motorcycle hitch thingy dewy. That's kind of sweet. 80 bucks, man. That's cheap. Really cheap. Probably end up falling off the back of your truck, though. There's an auxiliary heater. 20, 24,700 BTU, 12 volt auxiliary heater. Hmm. Cooling system, yeah, you'd have to have some kind of <sighs> something running for that too. <sighs> Need heat. 
Oh well, we'll figure something out, I'm sure. Even if it's just like a little, like I've got in my garage, like a propane heater, you know, hung from here or something, I just run it out to a 40 pound propane tank and I just turn it on when I want heat and then heats it up and I don't think it would, well, the floor's not insulated, so it'd be a little bit of cool coming off the floor, but there is um, about a foot and a half of gravel below us and then the studs go this way and the sheets go that way and it was uh, three I did three quarter inch sheets on here because I knew it was going to have heavy stuff you know and it's I didn't want the sag in between the deweys right so we put uh, big big wood in when we did her so maybe it's insulated enough I don't know toe straps they actually have a uh, last flyer I didn't uh, do that one for you but they had quite a few straps on sale which was good I was thinking of replacing some of mine and the ones with the big handles too I like them where you can actually get your whole hand and lick all oh, these ones out here it's not too dark out here. Well, it's getting too dark out here. Like these big fellers, I like these ones because you can get your whole hand into it, you know, and do the... Still nothing done on this tractor yet. Still waiting on parts, I guess, so... He wanted to go into the parade of lights coming up here with it, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that now, so... Uh, I was going to take, take Boris in too, but uh, I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen. Anyways, straps and the back cover. Nice toolbox. Ooh, would that fit in there? <laughs> I'd have to move my electrical all around, but that's a fairly nice tool chest. Actually, it would probably slide under here, though. Just roll it out when you want something. Yeah, well, I don't really want to get into a whole other set of tools, but there we go. So that's actually, those are good, too. Pretty handy for into the drill. I like them. Yeah, so anyways, uh, what other... Pro oh, that's Kubota, too. Holy crap, I didn't see that. Really? 500 bucks, it'd be sweet if it came through, uh, came with full of tools, but not likely. Eh? But anyways, there we go, that's the Princess Auto Flyer. That's all we got. Frickin' cold out here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so... Um, I don't know, like, what I'm gonna do if I should insulate this building or what. Uh, like, I don't have an insulated door on here, so there's no point in really keeping the heat on all the time you know you'd have to uh, basically turn the heat on when you come in and uh, warm the place up and then everything if you were working on you know it would be all cold then right I don't really like to do that I like to have it you know warm all the time you know and it's it's nicer then but sometimes it's not gonna work like that so but uh, anyways um, I guess that's about it for today. As you can see, she's pretty darn near pitch black out there, which really sucks, but I hate this time of year. Oh man, it's so crappy. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's I guess that's about it. Um, so nothing else new. I've just been, uh, had a busy week here and it's finally slowed up a bit and I uh, wanted to get my uh, trailer re-brushed uh, and then I can get those two pieces, uh, leaf trailer, get those two pieces separated and then put the box part outside and then um, store the trailer because I don't usually use it in the winter time so store it somewhere and uh, should be good to go. Um, replace that cylinder on the big tractor. It's all good now. It's funny actually, it must have been having problems for a while because I noticed when you're driving, if you especially got a load in the bucket, you go to turn, it was like like, and then it would finally go, and it was like, so I wondered if there was some internal problem with it, maybe already. And uh, I did uh, like three things this week with it, three, three funerals, and I had no problem at all. So there must have been some internal issues maybe with that cylinder anyhow. So maybe it was bypassing past the uh, seals in it too. It could have been. I don't know. It's hard to say, but... Uh, yeah, so we've got that cylinder. We want to tear it apart just to have a look inside. It's just small. It's just a little wee tiny little cylinder, too. It's not very big, so... Um... <laughs> One thing I noticed I had an issue with, which was kind of funny, because I haven't been permitted to do my normal videos for all my maintenance stuff, like oil changes and, you know, stuff that we were filming down there, I was doing my leaves and I totally lost track of my uh, hours going on the tractor and I ended up going over like 20 hours um, past my normal 100 interval changes. So I'm like, check the oil on it. I'm like, why the heck is it down to like half? This is the little tractor. Why is it down to like half? 
I'm like, that's kind of weird. So I think I ran that day and then I checked it the next day. I'm like, it's, it's down even more. What the heck's going on here? So something made me look at the hour meter. I'm like, 622. Holy crap, I should have done an oil change at 600. So it seems like once it gets past that 100, it just starts to eat the oil up instead of just sending it around. I don't know why. It doesn't wasn't leaking in anywhere. It must have been burning it up or something, but that's about a liter and a half down. It's I think three and a half liters to fill it. So it's probably about a liter and a half low. I'm like, holy crap. Plus that and the uh, antifreeze was down like to the ad mark. So I'm like, wow, that's weird. I wonder if it's like something's going on with it maybe too. Maybe it's got a bad head gasket or something. I don't know. But uh, to keep an eye on that and see how she's running. But uh, anyways, so yeah, anything, everything else has been good. Uh, nothing else new really. Same day, different dollar, we'll say. <laughs> same day, same same thing, different day. But anyways, better go. This is kind of stretching longer than I thought I was going to. And uh, we will carry on and figure out something for in here. I just really don't know what yet. But I kind of think if I was going to insulate it, I'd probably spray foam it. And I'd probably get him to, uh, well, I should probably button up the outside of the eave there because it's still open all the way out. I can't really get out there to show you now because it's probably really dark. You wouldn't likely see much, but it's all open right out there. So normally you can see light coming up, but I'd have to get all that packed in. I'm not really too concerned about ventilation, although probably should up there because it might rot it out. He would know better uh, for that than I would, but... Um, I don't exactly know how you would do that. You might have to, uh, for a shed, normally you would put like, I think, flat part out here and then insulate in the rafters down here, not up in there, right? If you know what I mean. Funny enough though, they did that in my garage down at the garage. In the big part, that's what they've insulated in here, you know, and I don't know if there's even anything to get vents down there so maybe it doesn't matter I don't know it doesn't make sense to me but uh, I'm not a builder so I can build metal buckets and stuff but when it comes to wood I'm no good <laughs> so I'd probably just to get him to come in and <laughs> spray the whole thing every cavity you can and you know tighten it right up that would make her solid or two I think it would tighten everything up right um, but uh, yeah I don't know I'll figure it out someday but anyways Got to go. It's time to eat. Starving. Had a long day and I haven't really even had any lunch, so <laughs> I'm getting kind of hangry. So anyways, have a good one. Thanks again for watching. Uh, this weekend, I don't know exactly what we've got planned for video-wise, for video game-wise. Um, I haven't played any more of the... Uh, oh, I did do one thing. Um, for Saturday. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it for Sunday, though. But uh, you guys want to farm sim Saturday this week? Let me know in the bottom. If you want a farm sim Saturday, I'll do you a farm sim Saturday. I don't know what level I'll play, what map I'll play, and what we're going to be doing in it, but we'll figure out something. But uh, anyways, let me know if you want that, or if you wanted something else. Um, we can do that too. Uh, we'll catch you all later. Thanks again for watching, and have a good night.